Please pay homage to the Buddha by reciting the Vodasa three times. <coughs> Namo Dasa Bhagavado Arahado <coughs> Rahado Sama Sambhogdhasa Actually, tonight we want to try one to mud talk, but they can say <laughs> only discussion, it is also good. <laughs> so if you have any question about meditation or any other, you can ask. But today she asked me about Penareva Sari Bogda. So I want to introduce you about Penareva Sari Bogda. Pass. Hmm? Is it okay? Okay? okay. There are many good examples to emulate about Benarivar Sari Buddha. According to Theravada Bali text, hmm? the beginning point of his parami is in the name of Anoma Dasi Buddha. One in Kalgu level and hundred aeons ago. In this world, there was a nomad Dasi Buddha. And then the human lifespan is hundred thousand years. Before a nomad Dasi Buddha appear in this world, Penariva Sari Buddha to be renounce the war and stay in Himalaya. Do you like Himalaya? Very good. <laughs> he practiced Samadha. He had already attained eight types of jhana, eight attainments, as well as five mundane psychic powers. He can fly in the sky. One day he knew that in the world there was a nomad Dasi Buddha. So he from Himalaya to a nomad Dasi Buddha. He fly from he went by in the sky. He fly in the sky and eh? pay respect to the nomad Dasi Buddha and eh? listen the demands, especially at the time a nomad Dasi Buddha. Taught him vipassana. So this is the beginning point. So at the day he practiced both samadha and vipassana. He had already attained five mundane psychic power. If any meditator wants to possess five mundane psychic power, first they must practice ten casinas. From what casino up to like casino or together nine casino. In these in those nine casinos he must practice in each casino eight edimates, eight types of jhanas. Four five madiriya jhana and four immadiriya jhanas. Four five madiriya jhanas are first jhana, second jhana, third jhana and fourth jhana. Four immediate jhanas are the base of boundless space jhana, the base of boundless consciousness jhana, the base of nothingness jhana, 
Tibis of neither perception nor non perception chana. Okay? In this retreat, I have opportunity to teach these eight types of jhanas for some yogis. So I'm also very happy. Hmm? So these dhammas are in our Theravara text. In those days, Venerable Sari Buddha do we also practice these eight items in 40 ways. What are 40 ways? Do you want to know? Please practice. <laughs> I want to teach you these 40 ways also. Now in this city, maybe few yogis, they practice these 40 ways. Is it good? Very, very good. Huh? So, after that only, they can practice five types of psych, mundane psych powers. So he had already practiced. Why he can practice? Because of previous parami. This is one reason. In those days, in India, these practices are also maybe partially popular. Partially means for those who renounce the world only in the forest, especially in Himalaya. So he had already practiced. So necessary is vipassana. So he listened the Dhamma about four noble truths. What are four noble truths? The noble truth of suffering, the noble truth of the origin of suffering, the noble truth of the cessation of suffering, the noble truth of the brightness leading to the cessation of suffering. He listened under the normal Dasi Buddha, these four noble truths. And then he practiced to understand these four noble truths systematically. Systematically means if a meditator wants to understand, number one, the noble truth of suffering, Dukkha Sejja. How he should practice? Number one, he should practice any Samatha Chana, especially in many Sotas, Buddha prays fourth jhana. Any fourth jhana is okay. Fourth jhana can produce strong, powerful light. That light is called the light of wisdom. When the light of wisdom is very, very bright and luminous, at that time, if he want to understand the noble truth of suffering, what he should do? What a noble truth of suffering? How do you understand? Sankhi te na penchu badane khanda dukha. This definition is from the first summum. Dhamma chaka bodhana. Dhamma wheel setting in motion, so that. Setting in motion of the Dhamma wheel. And that so that Buddha says, Sankhi te na penchu badane khanda dukha. In brief, by clinging aggregates are the noble truth of suffering, Dukkha Sejja. What are by clinging aggregates? The clinging aggregate of materiality, the clinging aggregate of feeling, the clinging aggregate of perception, the clinging aggregate of formations, and the clinging aggregate of consciousness. All together, they are by clinging aggregates. The clinging aggregate of materiality is materiality robot. The clinging aggregate of feeling, the clinging aggregate of perception, the clinging aggregate of formations, and the clinging aggregate of consciousness. These four types of clinging aggregates are mentality. Nama and robot, mentality and materiality. If you want to understand materiality, how you should practice? This is a very important rule. Tata Bhagava, Ruba Kamatana Gatendo, Sinkheba Manasi Gara Vasinawa, Vidhara Manasi Gara Vasinawa, Chadu Dadu Vavatana Gatesi. This is a very, very important rule. 
if you want to understand ultimate materiality, Buddha teaches how to design ultimate materiality in two ways only. What are two ways? Four elements meditation in brief way. And four elements meditation in wider way. These two only. If you want to understand ultimate materiality, you must begin four elements meditation. If you practice four elements meditation systematically, one day you can see your whole body is composed of subatomic particles called clubs. You can see these clubs. Your whole body will become translucent and bright. And that translucent body, if you try to see space element Akasa Dadu, you can see clubs. Space element is nothing but the boundary of clubs. So if you see this space element, you can see clubs. These clubs are not ultimate materiality. This is the a group of ultimate materiality or a cluster of materiality. If you analyze each club, then in each club there are eight types of materiality or nine types of materiality or ten types of materiality, etc. Such as earth element, water element, fire element, wind element, color, odor, flavor, nutritive essence, etc. These are ultimate materiality. When I remember Sari Buddha Dubi, he learned respectfully under the Anoma Dasi Buddha how to design ultimate materiality. Then he also listened how to design mentality. If you want to design mentality, number one, you should have enough concentration. Number two, you must have already designed ultimate materiality. These are very important. Without understanding ultimate materiality, if you design ultimate materiality, you cannot understand well. So you should try to design past ultimate materiality. Then you can continue to design ultimate materiality. When Arriba Saribo that do be respectfully, he practiced according to a normal Dasi Buddha's instruction. But in every session of Mahasthim Prana Sutta, Buddha teaches, in this case, Indi Ija Dawa Gaye Gaya Nubasi, we heard it, Bay Dawa Gaye Gaya Nubasi, we heard it. Ijada bhai dawa gaye gaya nubasi wiharadi. A bhikkhu designs both ultimate materiality and ultimate mentality, both internally and externally. So in this case, you must try to design ultimate materiality and mentality, both internally and externally. After that, Number two stage, Buddha teaches. Samudhiya Dhammanu Basi Vagaya Samay Viharadi. Uya Dhammanu Basi Vagaya Samay Viharadi. Samudhiya Uya Dhammanu Basi Vagaya Samay Viharadi. So you must discern, in this case, dependent origination, forward order, as well as backward order. Because of ignorance, craving, clinging, Polish informations and karma potency, five aggregates of mentality and materiality arise. Because of the complete cessation of ignorance, craving, clinging, Polish informations and karma potency, five aggregates cease completely without reminder. To be the origination forward order as well as reverse order. These two types of dependent origination, forward order and reverse order, one must try to understand at this stage. Then he must also try to understand 
momentary rising and passing away of cause and eh? effects. Cause means ignorance, craving, clinging, pollution, and permissions, and karma, as well as five aggregates. So moment by moment, they are rising and perishing. How he should practice? He carefully listen under the, the to the normal Dasi Buddha's instructions. And according to Buddha's instructions, he practice diligently. Then another stage is Ati Gayo Diva Banasa Bichu, Tati Bichu Badi Daho Di Yawa Diva Nyana Madaya Badi Sri Madaya. Only viewer mentality and materiality he sees. What is the meaning? Pure materiality and mentality, maybe many meditators in this, maybe few meditators, sorry, sorry. Few meditators, they practice vipassana. Abda Udiya Vyajnana, the knowledge of rising and perishing way, when they practice to see only perishing, Benga Jnana, etc. When their insight becomes very powerful, they see only pure materiality and mentality. What is the meaning? Pure. In previous stage, they may see a demon materiality, but there are also some calabas they cannot analyze because calabas are many billions and billions, both internally and externally. They cannot analyze every club. They can analyze partially. But when they practice Venga, Jnana, etc., only perishing, if they see, at the day, their inside knowledge become very powerful because of the power of their insight. They see only perishing of mentality as well as materiality. At the day, they did not see any club. They see only pure materiality as well as only pure mentality only. No club. This is the meaning of Atik Kayodi. Only pure mentality and materiality they are. Not any other. Then they practice systematically up to the knowledge of equanimity or Equanimous knowledge. Sankharu Bhagavatnyana. This is natural way of any bodhisattva or any chief disciple to be. Venerable Sari Buddha also practice up to this knowledge stage. Then in Rauno Ribat, many good examples, but I want to emphasize one example. In one of his past life, he ordained as a ascetic. He went to Himalaya. He practiced in Himalaya Medanjana. How long? No, four months. Seven years. Hmm? He practiced Medanjana for seven years, Medanjana only. Then he passed away with Medanjana. Before death is coming, he already practiced Medanjana. He entered into Medanjana concentration. Then other than death is coming. Then he wake up in Pramawa. Is it good? Very good. Eh? Do you want to go back to your mother's womb again? <laughs> Very daddy. Ah. <laughs> eh? Very daddy, this womb. Hmm? Do you want to go to that place again? Maybe he don't want to go to there. So he stayed in Brahma how long? For seven years. Seven years, he stayed there only entering into Medajana. What is one year? I want to calculate. According to our Theravada tradition, at the beginning of this war, hmm, 
many Brahmas who had not enough karma to continue in Brahma wa, they are karma finished. Other than they reborn in Deva wa as well as in human wa. Other than their lifespan is very long. But one day slowly they eat food, for example. Eh? At the day, they are abiyas, maybe men and women. At the day, they have attachment to each other. They, beginning point, they have a lot loba, dosa, and moha. Because of this loba, dosa, moha, their lifespan slowly in decrease up to 10 years. 10 years time, they kill to each other. So soon they afraid and they run away into the forest. And they practice Medha, Kruna, Mudida, Ubaka, loving kindness, sympathetic joy, uh, compassion and sympathetic joy and uh, equanimity. So their lifespan slowly increase up to infinite, uncountable lifespan. So from uncountable lifespan to 10 years, 10 years to uncountable lifespan, this couple is called one Andhra Kappa. 64 Andhra Kappas later, naturally this world is destroyed by fire or wind or uh, water. And then the destroying time also take long time, 64 Andhra Kappa aeons. Then after that, there is another only space. This is also 64. Then from the beginning of Rene to Oga, this new war again. Up to the Swande Brahmas, they have no lifespan in Brahma war. They gain down to human war. Up to that stage, eh? sons and moons appear. Up to that stage also 64. So 64, four times is called one cup, but one eel. <laughs> so <clears throat> for seven eons, he practiced Medajana. Is it good? Very good. Huh? Because of the power of this Medajana, when he was reborn again as a man, he had no anger. He had no hatred mind to anybody. Is it good? Very good. Hmm? Another, he had no attachment to anybody. Why? One day he was, in one of his previous life, he was king. He had one son. That son is called Dauta Kumara. He, that prince is very proud. And then one day he went to Gade to Oyana, hmm? Royal Garden, to enjoy sensual pleasures. On the way, he saw one picture got bought up. Many people pay respect to the picture got bought up and offer food. They don't care to him. He is at that time uh, <laughs> going with what called it, chariot. Hmm? So no one noticed to him, so he angry a lot. Because of this reason, he came down from his chariot and eh? go to the Vishika Buddha. Bhikkhu, have you any book? <laughs> With anger, huh? a little bit. Then pull his pole and then throw away. And then at the day, Vishika Buddha trying to see him. Why do you see me? Huh? <laughs> I am... The Dota Gumara prince, son of the gay. How do you think? <laughs> Pichika Buddha understood. So he fled into this guy and went to the Nanda Mula cave in Himalaya. <coughs> Where? No, it is. This is in Tibet. <laughs> I want to go to there, maybe Nesia Bodhiba. <laughs> To be respect only. <laughs> <laughs> then, when Vishika Buddha go away, then he was swallowed by art. A witch, paya, hell paya, burned to him. And then he passed away. 
When he heard this news in the valleys, he had a lot of suffering because he had a lot of attachment to his son. So he wished from today up to the attainment, up to the becoming of a hostage. May I have no attachment to anybody. He wish. Is it good? Huh? Very good. This wish fulfilled his parami. So in many lives, he had no attachment to anybody. He never married. He is always single. Is it good? Very good. Ah. <laughs> good? Very good. <laughs> no attachment. This is very good. Hmm? This is a very good example. The, the, another example is jealousy. He had no jealousy. Why? In one life, he was a gay. He had one queen. Queen has no good character. She has a lot of attachment to our Bodhisattva. At that time, Bodhisattva is Puro, Purohita. Purohita is his teacher, hmm? Prime Minister. So, but she persuaded this Prime Minister to have attachment to her. But Bodhisattva, he always observed his pure sila. He denied. So he, what called, he do many gossips to, to the king. So as a gain, Venerable Sariputta do be one day believe. So he punished this Purohita, his teacher. So his teacher says, uh, in one country, wise men are what called very powerful. In that country, there are some people who have quality, but they have no quality. But in one country, foolish men are powerful. In those country, in that country, some people who have no power, they are punished. In this way, he told. So when Venerable Sariputta do be he decay. He asked this word. He asked the situation. Then Purohita, our Bodhisattva, is very empty day. At the day, he think, why? I have jealousy. When he be jealousy to his wife, because of this jealousy, I punished wise man. So, from today, up to the Adame of a hostage, may I have no jealousy to anybody. He wish. Is it good? Very good. This jealousy also very dangerous. Then another is I forget another one. <laughs> so this is maybe this is very good. Oh, another one is he never, he had been never drinker. <laughs> what is the problem? One day he was gay. In that life, he had one son. He loved a lot. But the problem is other than he is drinker. Without any meat, he never take food. But on those days, they announced an Uposta day. Do you know Uposta? The full Monday, eh? Luna day. And then, as well as eight day, every eight day of fortnight. So, this is Ubo's day. No one must get any beer. Already announced. So, because of this reason, on the Ubo's day, for Ubo's day, they must prepare. On the before Ubo's day, they must prepare meat for him. But the cook, because of forgetfulness. He was frying the meat in the kitchen, but dog <laughs> bite and ran away. So because of this reason, there is no meat for him tomorrow. There is problem. So he approached to the queen. Queen suggests, 
gain our gain love his son very much. I will <coughs> prepare his love. And then I will carry his his son to the son is very small one, young one, maybe baby only. Maybe four months, five months, etc. So he carry she I will carry this son to her to him. Other than you should approach to self put. So according to Queen's suggestion, the cook also carry food on the day. At the day, King is maybe loving to his son very much in his anger. Then he approached to serve food. At the day, no meat, so he angry a lot. And then Queen explained the situation, but he don't want to obey, and then he squeezed his son, throw away. Don't cook, please. <laughs> Pass away, then they cook and sup. Then when drunk, disappear, where is my son? <laughs> he asked them, Queen explained in the DD other than he lost some wake up. Sense of spirituality. What is the reason? Because of this sura alcohol. Hmm? I drink this alcohol, this is a great problem for me. From today up to the edema of a hostage, may I have no bigger no drinker. May I be a no drinker in this way he wished. So he had no desire to drink any alcohol. Four things, very good. This is a good example. If you do one type of wholesome karma, if you wish to be, to emulate such example, is it good? No attachment, no anger, no jealousy, no drinker. Is it good? Very good. Oh. Attachment is very dangerous. Huh? Then many lives are many good examples in the last life. Because of this maybe wish, they are always single in many lives, together with Venerable Mahamoglana. Mahamoglana also many past lives, always single because of one problem. So in the last life, they are also single. They are good friends to each other, maybe in the Nalanda. I had been visited to his birthplace in Nalanda, but now there are which room I cannot say exactly, but there are many rooms. So in Nalanda, they are good friends, but one day they went to the festival. In that festival, they investigate oh, many, many people. Many, many hundred thousand people. So he, they try, oh, they will die hundred, within hundred years, these all people will die. No one will be remain in this war. If there is death, there must be deathless. This is their imagination. Then we should search for deathless state. So they discuss to each other and they agree and they begin ascetics. They wander from one teacher to another, another to another. They are wandering. Last, at last, they stay in Raja Gaha, Sinchia Bilata Buddha teacher. Under Sinchia, they practice, but they do not, they have no much enough, to, uh, they have no attempt. Oh, Hmm? What I did. Hmm? They do not satisfy. So they are searching for another practice. One day, when he is wandering in the Rajagaha, he saw Benariva Asaji. Do you know Pai Group Boygus? Koninya, Wamba, Badia, Mahanama, and eh? Asaji. Asaji is the youngest one. So Benarivasari Asaji is wandering for arms round in the Rajagaha. He saw, he had a lot of to see this Paikut. So he approached to the 
venerable as a Jew, but it is not suitable when he is going for arms round to talk. So he followed up the venerable as a Jew. Then outside the town, in a suitable place, venerable as a Jew sat under a tree to take meal. Other than he served his, with his water, and he served many ways in a polite way. And he wait up to the finish of meal. When he finished his meal, and then, then he approached Benariba Asaji and asked questions. What is your teacher? What is your dhamma? Etc. Oh, I'm only young one. I do not know my teacher's dhamma every day. Oh, please tell me only few words. No problem. I can understand in a white way. So Benariba Asaji teaches him, taught him one stanza. Ye dhamma he tu baba wa desa he dong tanta gado aha. Desa cha yo niro do eon wa di mahasamano. What is the meaning? Ye dhamma, this is the noble truth of safari dhokha sejak dhamma. What are five aggregates? He do baba wa, they are produce their cause. This is samuriya sejak. The noble truth of the origin of suffering. Desa he don data gado aha. They are cause for the display in the day. This is the very origination. This is the second noble truth, the noble truth of the origin of suffering. Desa ja yo nirodo. This is niroda seja. Not only because of these causes, these five aggregates arise. But because of the complete sensation of these five causes, <coughs> these five aggregates also cease completely without remainder. This sensation also our teacher taught. And then the but, the brightness leading to the sensation of this noble truth of safari also our teacher taught. In this way, he explained for noble truth in a very brief way. Before explanation finished, he began Sotabana. Is it good? Good? Very good. Why? He prayed this Samatha Vipassana. One incalculable uh, 100,000 aeons ago under the guidance of Anoma Dasi, Buddha Abdu, the knowledge of equanimity towards formations. This is important. Now also you have opportunity to practice this samatha as well as vipassana. You should not give up your good opportunity in this very life. Is it true? Yes, very important. So he had already accumulated. So he, when he is listening this stanza, he already understood what is the noble truth of suffering because he had already practiced for many past lives. What is the noble truth of the origin of Safari Surya Sija? He had already practiced, already understood in previous lives. What is the noble truth of the cessation of Safari? He had already understood. What is the practice leading to the cessation of Safari? He had already understood. So he went back to the Sanchiya Monastery in Rajagaha. And then he expounded this stanza to his good friend, Benarive Moglana Dubi. Then, when listening this stanza, Benarive Moglana Dubi also began Sotabana. Very good. Huh? They both discussed to each other, and eh? they discuss, they explained to their teacher, Sanchiya, we should go to Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha is now dwelling in Rajagaha Wiluvana Monastery. We should go there and ordain. Here, this is good Dhamma. But since he don't want to go, he, he also famous teacher. I'm being a famous teacher. I don't want be, to be a disciple of any teacher. So he did not go. Then they went together with their 250 disciples. They went to the Wiluvana Monastery. Nowadays, Wiluvana Monastery is a very small kumbha. But actually, in those days, this is very big kumbha. Very good garden, royal garden. 
and then they ordain under the Buddha. But in those days, there, is no, there was no reciting of Kama Vacha like the present day. Buddha says, Ehi Beku, Beku, please come. They already ordained as a Beku. <laughs> yeah, pull rope, pull bow. Everything is ready. Like 16 was 80 years old Bhikkhus. Then Buddha trying the mud dog. 250 disciples all begin arahas at the end of this course. But Penariva Sari Buddha Dubi, Penariva Moglana Dubi, they are still Sotapana. They must practice Penariva Mahamoglana. After ordination, he went to maybe one village, Kalawala Pogda. Village. Near that village, there is one forest. In that forest, he practiced self diligently for seven days. On the seventh day, Buddha visited Duhen and teach Paschalaya Mana Soda. According to that Soda, he practiced according to Buddha's instruction and then he began Rahat. But when Sari Buddha, he must practice two weeks. The full Monday of February. Before the full Monday, at the beginning of that February, they began. Sotabana and they ordain as a bhikkhu. After ordination, two weeks late, two weeks continuously, he practiced vipassana. How did he practice? This practice is mentioned in Anubra Sutta of Majima Nikaya Ubri Banasa. For example, he entered into Fajana. Imagine from Fajana, he contemplated Fajana Dhammas one by one, consciousness, nature, contact, nature. Feeling and nature, perception and nature, volition and nature, light pagality and nature, manasigara, ekagata, uh, one pointedness and nature, manasigara, addition is nature, etc. In this way, Tadi Pujana Damas, he brightens one by one nature, then Toka, then another. While brightening, he carefully investigates their rising, standing, perishing. If he want to see rising, then he get rising clearly. He see rising clearly. If he want to see standing, he see standing very clearly. If he want to see perishing, he see perishing very clearly. So he practice in this way. From first jhana to up to the seventh jhana, the base of nothingness jhana. But the base of neither perception nor no perception jhana, he cannot practice one by one. He can practice only as a group, Kalabha Samasana. As a group, he contemplates them as Nicha Dukkha and Ananda. In this way, he practices all jhanas. They all Paramatta Dhammas. How long? Anubhada Dhamma Vipassana, two weeks. He practices. After that, one day Buddha review. Oh, today Benarivya Sari Buddha will be Raha. So he carried Benarivya Sari Buddha from Veluvana to Gecha Kuta Hill. Nowadays, Gecha Kuta is very small. In those days, near Gecha Kuta, there is one cave, Sugra Kada cave. One pig dig this cave. Because this cave is old cave in Daino Kasapa Buddha, many bhikkhus in Kasapa Buddha had already used this cave. So one day, one pig dig this cave and then there she, uh, she born her children there. How I don't know. Huh? <laughs> then one hunter saw this situation and then he prepared, he take all, and then he prepared this cape, and then offered to the Buddha. So Buddha visited to that cape, and eh? inside the cape, he teach Virna Prigaha Soda, or Diganaka Soda. This is mentioned in Michima Nikaya. Briefly, he explained four elements meditation. Then he emphasized Virna together. 
emphasize ways <coughs> headed by within all mental formations to contemplate as nature to God, etc. And then at the end of this course, his nephew began, Sodapana, he began Arha. So when he 80 years old, before our Buddha they took final sensation, Pranibana, eight months before he took Pranibana in his birthplace, Nalanda. Nowadays, this place is reserved hmm? already. Hmm. This is about Benari Vesari Buddha to be. Okay? <laughs> You can also discuss any question. This is the last day. Hmm? Okay. Any question? <laughs> did you say that he took his parents before the Buddha? Yes, yes. Papu also... <coughs> He take Prini, uh, Papu, no one does he Buddha. He also pull, pull parami. But to be cheap, right side cheap disciple, to be right side cheap disciple, he wish under the no one does he Buddha. This is the beginning point. But Papu, that no one does he Buddha, he already pull, pull parami. He had parami. And then day, if he, uh, under the normal dancing Buddha, if he want to be gara, he can be gara very easily. But he don't want to be gara in those days. He want to be one of the chief disciples of future Buddha. So he wish to be ga, to be chief disciple of future one of future Buddha. Then a normal dancing Buddha gave definite prophecy, maybe. In Kalgu level, a hundred years later, Gorma Buddha will appear, and then you will be one of the chief disciples of that Gorma Buddha. In this way, a normal dancing Buddha gave definite prophecy. Any question? Maybe if you have pure sila. Ajd bigwe sila wado chido bani di wisodada. Because of the purity of baju, one's wishes will be fulfilled because of the purity of baju. So purification of baju is necessary. Other than if you do any wholesome karma, such as many day day or maybe offering food, etc. Any wholesome karma, other than if you wish one day, you are wish maybe okay. So then I have, I must have legs track. Um, I don't know where I go. Then I, do I remember the wish I have made? If you marry, it is not easy to say. Huh? If you practice, if you ordain as a Siali or as a Bhikkhu and practice diligently, other than you may remember. No question? There are 500 bhikkhus. These 500 bhikkhus learned 
Samadha and Vipassana under the Buddha, and they practice diligently. In those days, there are four Samadha meditation subjects. They are compulsory. Medha, loving kindness meditation. Buddha knows the regulation of Buddha's quality. Asuba, fullness meditation. Maranasati, <coughs> regulation of their own death. These four meditation subjects are compulsory. Every meditator, every bhikkhu must learn. Although other samatha meditations, they practice. But those 500 bhikkhus, they emphasize when practicing samatha, ten casinas, and eight adamas. Based on this ten casina and eight adamas, they practice vipassana up to udya via jnana states. The knowledge of rice and fall, knowledge of rice and perishing stage. Then they went, they are wandering like, they went to the Himalaya. In Himalaya, they saw one forest, very good for them. And then close to that forest, not very far away, there is one village for Armstrong. So they decide to stay in that forest and to Go paint up by the arms round to that village. So they stay there, but they, because of the power of their baju, they was above the trees, they stay in their mansions. They cannot stay there because when pure sila bhikkhus, who has pure sila, eh, bhikkhus stay under the tree, they are very hot to stay inside their mansion. Because of this reason, they carry their children and they wander here and there. Within, they, these bhikkhus will go back only wasa time. Wasa is maybe rainy wasa. Hmm? Rains retreat, retreat three months. Within three months, uh, bhikkhus must not go anywhere for to stay. Only one place must be stay for three months. So this is Winia Ru. Buddha picks this rule. Because of this reason, once they are dying, they will not stay here. They, will, they may go somewhere. So they are waiting, but once they are coming, they, never, they did not go. So they frighten this because night time. They show people ugly, rubber, ugly hot bodies, as well as very bad smiles. So Beku began sick. Then they discuss to each other. They went. They decide to go back to bo- to the Buddha and ask to su- ask to the Buddha for suitable dwelling place. So Buddha review when they visit to the Buddha. Buddha reviewed uh, these bhikkhus will be arahat only this in this place in that place if they practice. So Buddha suggests then to go back to that place, but Buddha teach Kraniya Medha Sutta for meditation as well as protective chanting Parita. Then in that Sutta, Sukhi Nova Kimi No Hodo Sapa Sada Bondo Sukhi Dada, this is the first summer to send Medha. This way of Practice is for those who had already attained Medha Jana, not for beginners. These bhikkhus had already practiced Medha meditation before, but they do not emphasize. They emphasize only Kasina, ten Kasina, eight Adamas, and then they practice Vipassana. So, because of this reason, Buddha changed to practice Medha meditation in this way. At that time, they Practice Medha based on their Kasina Chana. They practice Medha meditation. Their Medha became very powerful because of the power of this Medha Jana. When they go back to that forest, all they was welcome to them. And they serve. They look up the compound, they clean the compound, they carry waters for big goods, etc. So they comfortably stay in that forest and practice Samatha and Vipassana. At the end of race retreat, they all begin rahas. 
So emulating this example, you, we usually teach one casino or maybe 10 casinos plus, especially eight adamants or pork jana. Based on this pork jana, if they, I teach meta meditation. So if they practice based on this pork jana, meta meditation system, medically, they can attain meta jana within one Sunday or two Sunday very easily. But based on this meta jana, they must increase their meta to become very powerful meta. So systematically. I also want to teach you this, um, this medi meta meditation practice to you, but you don't want to ordain. So this is a problem. <laughs> 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 so I have no chance to teach you meta meditation in this retreat. <laughs> But here, maybe two meditators, they practice this, medita this meta meditation successfully. I'm also very happy. <laughs> Sandra, um, I, I, I was wondering, at the, um, at the end of the retreat, or at the end of sittings, we share merit, we, we offer merit and share merit. But uh, then Lord Sisananda was talking about, about making a wish for, for the next, for, to, uh, to attain Nibbana or to be free of, of defilements. We can do that every time, I suppose. But, um, but when, we, when we wish to offer merit, share merit, my understanding is that it, uh, it only is beneficial if, 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 for example, our parents or friends or loved ones that have departed or past life family, it's only beneficial if they are in the preta realm, if, and they and they and they can uh, connect and they can rejoice. If they don't rejoice from that realm, then it is of no benefit. Is that right, or is there or is there some way that they can achieve benefit? Benefit or no benefit? Sometimes a little bit difficult to see because this this culture. Because of this king of the Saga, the Dhamma is very powerful. Powerful means Buddha's teachings are always referring for realization of four noble truths only. These four noble truths are very powerful. If a meditator realizes these four noble truths, he is already escaped from the four awful states forever. He will never reborn in one of four awful states. If he have any chance to be reborn, he may reborn as a human being or Deva or Parma, depending on his Parmi. So very powerful. So, because then, if he begins Kadagami, he had opportunity to come back to human world once only. But if he want only, if he don't want, no problem, he have no chance to come back to human world. If he begins Nagami, he will never come back to human world as well as Deva world. He will reborn in Brahma world only. And then he will begin Rahat there. If he begins Rahat, he will liberate that from Rauna Ribat from all planes. So this is very powerful because of this reason King Saka, King of Deva asked to the Buddha after every summer, after the Madok finished, please share merit to, to him as well as to everybody. Maybe if they call Sadhu, they can head, they can if they rejoice, they have wholesome tamas. Although they have good result or not, no problem. They have, they already accumulate wholesome tamas. But Pidas, these are ready to escape from the, their suffering. So they will be more beneficial only. But others, if they rejoice, they also accumulate the wholesome tamas. So sharing is one type of wholesome karma. Rejoicing is one type of wholesome karma. 
So two types of wholesome karma. But beneficial means especially Kain Bhemi Sara's relatives referring to this problem, this is beneficial, no beneficial, etc. Kain Bhemi Sara is in the end of maybe 91 aeons ago, there is Vipassi Buddha. In the end of Vipassi Buddha, Kain Bhemi Sara is the treasurer of three princes. Three princes are maybe small kings in their provision. Maybe one state, two state, etc. So in that state, they invite to the Vipassi Buddha a hundred thousand bhikkhus for Vosa Rains Retreat. At that time, they want to undertake ten precepts near Buddha and to look after Buddha and Sangha. So they undertake ten precepts and they carry what called yellow robe or brown robe, not white cloth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they <coughs> they give responsibility to the treasurer, and then the treasurer is King Pemisara. In the kitchen, King Pemisara collect his relatives to cook in, in the kitchen. So his relatives, they cook and they eat first. After that, that, only they offer food to the Buddha and Sangha. This is their unwholesome karma. Because of this unwholesome karma, after that, they are reborn in hell and Buddha while many times. But for 91 aeons, they never escaped from poor hopeful state. So at the beginning of this war, they escape from the hell and they begin pedas. They are waiting for opportunity to escape from this suffering. But in the end of Gorma Buddha, when King Bhimisara Obha Veluvana Monastery to the Buddha and Sangha, as well as put to the Buddha and Sangha, at that time he forgot to share merit. So they shouted night time in his palace. Because of this reason, next day he tried new donation to the Buddha and Sangha and share merit to them. At that time, they liberated from this suffering and reborn in Dewa Buddha also showed to see King Bhimi Sara, they escaped from the Buddha and reborn in Dewa to see King Bhimi Sara. So, because of this example, so every after every donation to share merit, they suggest. Oh. No, so I think I think sometimes it's the English translation because in English it's like if you say share, it is like you have something and I give you a little bit, I give you a little bit, and I have a little bit for me. But it is not like that. It's more, is it? It's more inviting to come and rejoice and, and participate in the rejoicing. Is that right? Maybe this is one example I want to show, not to say. There's one kind of light. So another kind of light copy from this kind of light, Paya. The another kind of light also there is Paya. But this Paya not this Paya. Here also Paya. The another also Paya. In the same way, I don't know, I do not understand English well, but in this case, sharing merit. Meaning is, I have already accumulated this whole swantama. This whole swantama is beneficial for me as well as to them. So if you rejoice, you will also enjoy good results in future. So please rejoice in this way that this is telling. For example, when we saka, do you know we saka? Eh? Well, after offering Poparama Monastery to the Buddha and Sangha, in this he what got, he celebrate donation for seven days. At the day, one good friend, lady, she helped to the Visakha only. 
And then she also very happy. She rejoices this good karma. So she was reborn because of this rejoicing only she she never offer anything. She rejoices others offering only. Because of this reason she was reborn and they were after that. So that rejoicing only. They please rejoice. So they rejoice okay. But maybe in English I do not understand well. Hmm. Any question? Mimamsa and Kamal Vichaya, which are both translated as investigation in English? Original meaning is say. Maybe Pinya. Pinya, do you know Pinya? Pinya, sometimes Samadhi. Samadhi also Pinya. Sometimes Dhamma Vichya, Dhamma Vichya also Pinya. Sometimes Vimansa, Vimansa also Pinya. So this was many synonymous terms in different places Buddha teach. So Vimansa is especially Chanda, Variya, Vimansa, Chanda, Variya, Chaita, Vimansa. So eighty Bada, four types of accomplishment. This one doing anything, this one of this is very important. If you have certain desire to ordain as a bhikkhu, I will ordain. It is possible. Oh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> this is a very weak, not certain desire. So this is very difficult. I will try. Oh, okay. This is possible. <laughs> So such decision is very important, this desire. Chaita, Satron Chaita, Satron Mai. Mai is very powerful. This Mai, the whole body can carry from one place to another. Because my, this Mai produces Mai Bon Kalabas. If you want to go to Sri Lanka, it is possible. Your Mai is very strong. If you want to go to Himalaya, possible to meditate there. Mind is very powerful. Sometimes we mansa. While practicing, we mansa is very important. Pinya. We mansa is investigate one type of investigating knowledge. How investigate? Oh, this is Ruba, this is Nama, this is materiality, this is mentality, this is God, this is effect. This is nature, this is Dukkha, this is another. In this way, if you investigate, then investigating can lead for attainment of Nirvana. So this type of Vimansa is very important. This Vimansa originally is also called Dhamma Vichya, same, same meaning. But this Dhamma Vichya is also called Samadhiti, right view. Same meaning, <laughs> but jnana, mega jnana, pala jnana, etc., vipassana jnana, so jnana also say. Synonymous terms. You're probably going to tell me to forget it because it's. I, I'm curious. I'm speaking to an Ujjayi about this. I'm, I'm curious a little bit about the nature of nibbana because um, we talk about nibbana, but very few people understand what nibbana really is. And, and the way it is described, um, certainly in our language in the West, it gives the impression that it's a, a place, uh, like almost like a realm that you go to nibbana. That you go to nibbana. But yet, um, the more I look at Nibbāna, Nibbāna doesn't exist, really. Nibbāna is just another word for cessation. 
the same thing regardless of session. Is that correct or not? This is usually many meditators or many Western teachers. They do not. They cannot distinguish the meaning of sa ubadisi sa nibbana, nubadisi sa nibbana, and asenkata nibbana. Usually, sometimes. Depending on the listener's inner inclination and disposition of faculties, both that teaches in different way. Meaning is same. Different way means Rage Kyo, Dose Kyo, Mohe Kyo is Nibbana. Why? Unconditioned element or unpumped element, this is called Asangada Dadu. This is Nibbana. That nibbana is the object of supramandane part in Prussian knowledge. But they had not yet already attained supramandane part knowledge as well as Prussian knowledge. So Buddha explains the object of supramandane part in Prussian knowledge. This is nibbana, then they will not understand. So because of this reason, Midda Purigali, not directly. Vidya Purigali Buddha teaches sometimes Raga Kyo, Dose Kyo, Mohe Kyo, Nibbana. Complete cessation of Raga Dosa Moha is Nibbana. Sometimes complete cessation of suffering is Nibbana. This is Pai Aggregates. Complete cessation of Pai Aggregates is also called Nibbana. This is Vidya Purigali. So, complete cessation of the Pilumis, Raga, Dosa, Moha, etc., all the Pilumis is called Nibbana. This is Sa Uba, this is Nibbana. This Sa Uba, this is Nibbana, and Swan Sutta is explained as Kilesa Pari Nibbana. For example, our Buddha, under the body tree, he began Arhat. When he began Arhat, he already possessed. Onishin knowledge, Sabi Nyoda, Nyana. At that time, his Arham, but that's trying all the Pilumis completely without remainder. At that time, all the Pilumis, including Raga, Dosa, Moha, or Ignorance, Craving, Clinging, etc., all sees completely without remainder. This is Kiliasa Brinivana. So that Kiliasa Brinivana. After Kilesa Brinibana, 45 years later in Kushi Nagra, he took or he entered into final cessation. Anuba, this is Nibbana. This is Kanda Brinibana. Kanda Brinibana, Anuba, this is a means there is no substrate done. Any Dhamma is not Rame. Without exception, all pi aggregates cease completely without remainder. This is also called Kanda Pranibbana. So, Gilesa Pranibbana has cause. Kanda Pranibbana also has cause. What is the cause? His part knowledge, four part knowledge, as well as four pollution knowledge in Nibbana. When he realized by his four-part knowledge, as well as four-pollution knowledge, realized Nibbana at that day, only his four types of part knowledge, that's trying to find the stage by stage, completely without remainder. Because of the complete cessation of the final mess, his part his karma have no power to produce any future existence. Because of this reason, at final cessation stage, Kanda Pranibana Pai aggregate cease completely without remainder. So this Kanda Pranibana or Nuba this is a Nibana same. Sa Uba this is a Nibana and Kilesa Pranibana also same meaning. So they have their own cause, Popa knowledge. Poor pollution knowledge and unconditioned element are Nibbana. 
That Asangata Nibbana is the object of four part knowledge as well as four fruition knowledge. When four part knowledge realizes this unconditioned element, Asangata Dadu or unformed element, at that time only part knowledge can describe the violence. Because of the complete sensation of the violence, his karma also sees completely with the remainder, no power to produce any future existence. So because of this reason, at the final sensation stage, all five aggregates also sees completely with the remainder. So they have Sa'uba, this is a Nibbana, and Nuba, this is a Nibbana, or Kilesa, Prinibbana, and Kanda, Prinibbana has their own cause. Unconditioned element, which is the object of Subramani, four part knowledge as well as four fruition knowledge, are always permanent. Nature, Sukha, Ananda, always exist. Whether there are Buddhas appear in this world or not, no problem, they always exist. Whether there are many people who realize Nibbana, or there are no people who will realize Nibbana. No problem. It is always exist, permanent. So this is a conditioned element. So, but that unconditioned element is not easy to understand. Because of this reason, there are some traditions like Mahayana, they think this is Biwale, Nibbana is Biwale, etc. So many misunderstandings. Just cessation only. Cessation state. Cessation state, but unconditioned element. There is no mentality, no materiality. Because of this reason, no Amidabha, no Buddha, no Dhamma, no Sangha, etc. But this still always exists. Unformed element, but it is not easy to understand. Then if it is not easy, who will understand? Noble ones who had full part knowledge and full fruition knowledge realize. And the reason the Buddha wouldn't talk about annihilation or eternalism is because there's nothing there's nothing there to annihilate, nothing there that is eternal. Annihilation, annihilation and eternalism, they accept Adam. Both accept Adda. Buddha never accept Adda. Buddha always deny and they accept another doctrine. And then Buddha's teaching is not analyzing. Many people they think the complete cessation of the polymers as well as complete cessation of high aggregates is anal uh, analyzing. But it is not analyzing. This is called Vipicca Vada. Because of this reason, while practicing vipassana, they are too unnecessary. Because of ignorance, craving, clinging, volitional formations, and karma potency, by aggregates rise. This is causal rising. This is divinity origination for what order? They again, Buddha also teach. Vijaya, Dweva, Asisa, Viraga, Niroda, Sankara, Niroda, etc. Because of the complete cessation of ignorance, craving, clinging, pollution, and formations, and karma potency, by aggregates also cease completely with the remainder. This is reverse order or negative order of dependent origination. So because of this reason, Buddha teach both. So because of this, this rise, because of complete cessation of this, this also cease completely with the remainder. This is Vipicca Vada, no analysis. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> no question? Okay. If there is no question, let us stop. Hmm? Sharing merit, <laughs> or maybe rejoicing. Ida me bonya, 
Asawakaya Wahang Hodu Ida me bonya Neba Nasa Pachio Hodu Ida me bonya Saba Zadana Pajima Tesabe Mesama Ponya Baga Labandu Sadu 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 Sadu